Tonight, tempo of political activity rises ahead of 2023 general elections as main political parties choose party executives. APC leaders applaud conduct of congresses across the country. PDP moves to strengthen its structures in seven states, holds fresh congresses, as former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says he's hopeful of a transparent process at the party's convention. Former Kano State Governor honors EFCC invitation for interrogation over allegations of fraud involving pension remittances. And UK police continue to question 25-year-old British man after the deadly stabbing of a member of parliament. On business news tonight, International Monetary Fund projects Nigeria's debt to GDP ratio to hit 42% in the next five years. And on sports news, Vice President Professor Yemio Shimbaja receives the Queen's baton for the 2022 Commonwealth Games to be held in Birmingham. The nation's political atmosphere is indeed beginning to gather some momentum as the 2023 general elections draw closer. And ahead of that major electioneering season, the ruling All Progressives Congress today held state congresses across the Federation. The exercise, which is coming after the conclusion of its ward and local government congresses, has witnessed a change of guard of state officials that will pilot the affairs of the party chapters in the state for four years. Well, it's not only the APC that's conducting state congresses today. The opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, is also holding congresses, but only in few states where they had some issues. The intention is to put in a proper structure before the national convention at the end of this month. Congresses of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC, which held across the country today, the exercise was conducted largely via a consensus arrangement with open affirmation of candidates by the delegates. This report captures how it all played out in some northern and southern states. In the South-South, the All Progressives Congress in River State had a successful Congress, devoid of rancor. As the Minister of Transportation, Chibike Amechi, appeared confident of a new dawn for the party in the state. So what this opportunity gives us is an opportunity to ensure that every APC member has a right to vote and be voted for. This gives APC the opportunity to prepare because what happened was that some members of APC, using the other party and the state government, use the institution of judiciary to stop Nigerians from having a proper choice. This is an opportunity for us to have that choice now. In Edo State, the new executive council members of the APC emerged through a consensus as Colonel David Muse retired, continues as chairman. Meanwhile, it wasn't as smooth in Abia State as two different congresses were held, one at Umuahia Township Stadium and the other at Ekeledi Motor Park, Uguchara Abia State. The Congress at Uguchara witnessed a large turnout of APC members and the Congress Committee led by Right Honorable Babatunde Kolawale from Ondo State. While the Stadium Congress had all the state actors, including the Minister of State, Mines and Steel Development, Uche Oga, and House of Representatives spokesperson, Benjamin Kalu. APC faithful in their hundreds gathered at the Ndubisi Kanu Square in Oweri, the Imo State Capital, to elect new state officials that will steer the activities of the party. Through a consensus arrangement, Mr. McDonald Eberi emerged as the state chairman of the party. While congratulating the new state executives, the Imo state governor, Hope Uzodima, charged them to ensure that they reconcile all aggrieved members. I want to urge you not to betray the confidence reposed on you by our great people. Go out there, carry out political evangelism, preach the good message. Tell the story the way it is, and our party will grow from strength to strength. In Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, there was a consensus arrangement at the State Pavilion in Adu Ekiti, where Mr. Paul Omotosho was returned as the chairman. This has been a remarkable event, and it has gone on peacefully. It has been resolved consensually, and it has received the endorsement of all delegates here present on behalf of the party from all the constituents in the state. Meanwhile, in Ondo State, the acting state's chairman, Ade Adetimei, emerged as chairman. 
delegates of the party from all the 18 local government areas of the state participated in the exercise. In Jigawa State, the All Progressives Congress adopted a consensus arrangement in the state's party congress. The congress was held at the Aminu Kano Triangle in Dutse, the state capital. Niger State APC has elected new state executive members through a consensus, with Haliru Jikanturu as the state chairman. The Niger State Governor Abubakar Bello says the consensus arrangement is aimed at uniting members of the party. However, another group also conducted a parallel congress which produced new executives. About 162 people vote forms and were denied screening. And we have made all, we have exhausted all avenues to get to this cleaning who couldn't. If you collected your phone from the market women and brought it to us, we will not scream. But we, all the phone that we scream are the phone that authenticated purchased through the due process. Consensus candidates were also adopted in Yobe State with the Senate president in attendance. You are the chairman today because Yobe, Yobe State chapter of APC, has demonstrated all through its history solidarity, peace, and tranquility. In Kaduna State, following a successful exercise, Governor Nasir El Rufai, who appeared happy with the outcome, is optimistic of an APC that will continue to win elections. The most important legacy I would like to leave behind in Kaduna State is a strong party that will win the next election and the one after and those after. And in Gombe State, 712 delegates were accredited and participated in the voting process. Governor Inouye Yahya, who was satisfied with the peaceful conduct of the exercise, said the party maintains a positive outlook ahead of 2023. I would like to urge all party followers and the leadership to go and imbibe this culture and tradition of peaceful coexistence and giving the rights and privileges to all party members so that together we can move the APC forward. Meanwhile, the State Congress of the APC in Taraba State was postponed indefinitely and no reason has been given. Here in Lagos State, a former member, House of Representatives in the 6th Assembly and former Commissioner for Rural Development has been elected Chairman of the APC. Cornelius Ojelabi was elected unopposed alongside 35 others in a voice vote by more than a thousand delegates at the Mobolaji Johnson Arena in Nikon, Lagos. Our correspondent, Bukola Samuel Wemimo, brings us details. More than 1,700 delegates in colorful attires fill the main bowl of the Mobolaji Johnson Arena. Expectations are high as they gear up to elect 36 new officials for the Lagos APC. But it seems the voice would replace the box in this electioneering process. Chairman of the Election Organizing Committee, Adebayo Adelabu Kwenkelemes, explains. So therefore, we have 36 positions of Lagos State Executive Council for APC and all the aspirants were returned unopposed. Ordinarily, we should go into detailed voting, but because we don't have more than one aspirant for each of the positions, we have decided to adopt voice voting. Those who are in support of Comrade Ayodele Adewale as the state organizing secretary should say yes. yes. Earlier reports about a few dissenting voices against the consensus list for the 36 elective positions were later expressed in the voice votes to elect candidates to fill the positions of the state special physically challenged leader and the state organizing secretary. Party stalwarts, including the outgoing chairman caretaker committee, Tunde Balogun, applaud the consensus approach, arguing that dissension is normal in a democracy. According to our constitution, it's not a full-time exercise. It's going to be an exercise that is constitutional in, in every way. Constitutional in the sense that uh, people, candidates can definitely win elections through uh, either by direct or indirect primaries or direct elections or by consensus. It's the consensus we have settled for. I think that's the essence of the whole uh, uh, democratic process. Uh, you can't see, we can't sit in our various homes and expect that 
whoever you nominate, who is not popular amongst party members, should be voted for. The essence of democracy is what we are here to do. Uh, even if you have consensus arrangement, you must still come, according to our party constitution, must still come to the venue to confirm it. The executive governor of Lagos State is joining us here. After what seemed a painstaking electioneering process lasting over four hours, the chairmanship position is decided in a voice vote in favor of Cornelius Ojelabi, as are the 35 others. Cornelius Oyefonu Ojelabi as the new party chairman of Lagos State APC. Congratulations, please. Governor Babajide Sonwulu praises the election committee for a job well done while also charging the new exco to be above board in their new role. Indeed, Lagos have chosen well, and I know truly well that this team will take Lagos, will take APC in Lagos, will take all of us to a level that will be enviable to the national level. The state congress for the All Progressives Congress here in Lagos appears to have been peaceful and relatively free and fair. Whether this is a sign of what is to come ahead of the 2023 general elections is what remains to be seen. From the Mobolaji Johnson Arena, Bukola Samuel Gwemimo for Channels Television News. Over to Ogun State, where Mr. Yemi Sanusi, the immediate past caretaker chairman of the state chapter, has been elected as the substantive chairman of the party at the state congress held at the Moshud Abiola Stadium in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital. Other executives also emerge through the consensus option with delegates affirming the election through the voice vote. Addressing the 1,730 delegates from 20 local government areas, the state governor, Dapo Abiodun, asked the elected officials to be more loyal to the party. First is the accreditation of the All Progressives Congress delegates from the 20 local government areas of the state. The arrival of the state governor, Dapo Abiodun, set the tone for the commencement of the state congress. <laughs> to ensure the smooth conduct of the exercise, security operatives are stationed at strategic places to maintain law and order. The exercise conducted by the state congress committee, led by Chief Wale Uhu at the Moshud Abiola Stadium, is monitored by the Independent National Electoral Commission. We we'll run the party for the next four years. Then the congress chair asked for the cooperation of delegates for a consensus candidate. For the consensus, when we have anybody for any of the offices without opposition, which means that single person has been agreed upon in the consensus form. What we shall do about that is to ask the majority of the party members to give us a voice vote. The newly elected chairman in his inaugural speech promises to reunite a group of members of the party. Together we can present a formidable team at the pool. I seize this opportunity to congratulate all newly elected party officers from the ward to the state. I implore you all to take your election as a call to duty and dedicate political acumen to, to manage whatever branch or harm of the party given to you to tender. <laughs> Congratulating the newly elected officials, Governor Abiodu calls for unity and wants detractors to stay clear. Your loyalty is to none other but APC. That is the platform that has made it possible for you to occupy this position today. All those who continue to be deluded, I hope the message is heard loud and clear. I am the Chief Security Officer of this state. I will not allow a breakdown of law and order. These executives are expected to pilot the affairs of the state's All Progressives Congress at least for the next four years. In part two, after the break, another APC group led by Senator Ibikule Amosu holds Congress in Ogun State. 
and we'll look at other state congresses held by the APC. That's in a moment. Join us again. Just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our main stories. Tempo of political activities rise ahead of 2023 general elections as main political parties choose party executives. APC leaders applaud conduct of congresses across the country. PDP moves to strengthen its structures in seven states as former Vice President Adiko Abubakar says is hopeful of a transparent process at the party's convention. Former Kano State Governor honors EFCC invitation for interrogation over allegations of fraud involving pension remittances. And UK police continue to question 25-year-old British man after the deadly stabbing of a member of parliament. But still in Ogun State, where the Mr. Ademiola Adebi has emerged as the APC chairman in another congress conducted by Senator Ibikune Amosu-led group at the AK Palace in Abeokuta, the state capital. Some thugs had attempted to disrupt the exercise but were overpowered by the firepower of the police. After calm returned, members elected the officials as party leaders, including a former governorship candidate, Adekunle Akinladi, joined the party followers for the exercise. Early pictures around the designated venue of the All Progressives Congress State Congress in Ogun State. After what appeared like initial hiccups and barring of delegates into the AK Palace ground venue of the Congress, the gates were flung open. As with such events, the trappings of praise singing, drumming, conviviality and waiting are in full supply. Minutes gone, the grounds swelling in numbers with party faithfuls, then BAM! Gunshots rent the air. <coughs> People scampering, chaos and confusion all in one fell swoop are the entrance of the venue. In minutes, the situation came under control following the intervention and repelling of the invading hoodlums by security forces stationed at the venue. Like nothing happened, life quickly returned to normal, just as a former governorship candidate in the state makes a somewhat heroic entrance into the venue. Proceedings resumed with the roll call of candidates and seats up for occupation. Voting soon commences, capturing the 20 local government area and the over 300 wards. We are going to give the party a new leave, lease of life. We are going to give the party a responsible and responsive leadership. We won't discriminate against anybody. On the sidelines, we caught up with a serving senator from the state who is also here as a delegate. And these are his thoughts about the entire exercise, the party structure and the expected outcomes. So what we have is, uh, is a party that, uh, that, uh, that's a bit of an imbalance. I mean, I always say it's about an 80-20 dichotomy. You know, you, you have 80% 80, 80 that is... Uh, that has the vote and the support of the people, and then you have the 20 percent that has the that's governing the state. Let's put it that way. Other party actors also bear their minds on the state congress. Well, there, there is a leadership at the at the centre for the party, and I'm certain they are aware of what is going on, uh, and I'm sure they will address it appropriately. Um, I'm also aware that recently uh, a committee was inaugurated, like a peacemaking committee. And I'm sure this is one of the things, you know, that committee was set up to uh, address. So I'm sure it will be addressed at the appropriate time. Sorting and counting followed, after which results were announced. I'm together with my chairman and also one member of our committee. I hereby declare, declare the elected member 
as those who were elected by their delegate by consensus in Ogun State. We wish you all the best. We thank you all for your patience, for the way that we conducted this Congress peacefully. We thank you all. Officials have emerged, including the state party chairman, but the biggest message from this venue is that members of the Old Progressives Congress in Ogun State have made their choices, one which they hope resonates across the political landscape, regardless of perceived dissenting voices. Ulu Phillips, Channel Television News. From Ogun, we move to Ebony State, where the All Progressive Congress has elected its new executives to pilot the affairs of the party in the state for the next four years. The state congress, which took place at the Pa Rutangeli Township Stadium in Abakiliki, the state capital, had party faithful turnout in their numbers. A total of 1,151 delegates from 13 local government areas of Ebony State were accredited and participated in the election. The former acting chairman of the state executive of the party, Mr. Stanley Okoro Emega, emerged winner and was returned elected. All the great leaders of this rising sun state of a boy state. The chairman and members of the only Congress committee for this state Congress from Abuja, the INEC monitors, all the great delegates, my dear brothers and sisters, let me first and foremost congratulate our national leader. Mr. President, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whose integrity and peaceful dispositions has given rise to a very peaceful and due process party, APC. APC! It's not only the APC that's conducting state congresses today. The opposition, that's the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is also holding congresses in seven states. The states are Oyo, Kwara, Lagos, Adamawa, Bronu, Kebi, and Ebony. And in some of those states, the governor, Omar Fintiri, and the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, cast their votes. The party is conducting these elections to ensure a proper constitution of structures in the state before the national convention at the end of the month. You can see that it's a transparent process. It's a credible process. And uh, over time, we have developed a spirit of consensus, both at the state level and even at the national level. I believe these are the basis where we expect that Nigerians can now have confidence in the PDP and vote back the PDP into power. Well, at the national level, you should also expect a credible and transparent process like this one. Uh, of course, because the national level is, is larger, is uh, more complex, you may find a little bit of you know competition. But here, we have been able to uh, see that we have come to a consensus in virtually all the positions. We are in the opposition, and so we we'll remain united and work hard to see that the bad leadership of APC is removed in Nigeria and we we'll replace it so that Nigerians will continue to enjoy the good leadership for which they were known for, particularly our youths, uh, for both human and capital development in Nigeria and in other states. In Oyo State, Honorable Dayo Ogumbiru has emerged a new PDP chairman in the state after winning 3,111 votes of the 3,250 delegates who attended the Congress. The Congress was held at the open court of the Lekon Salami Sports Complex. The Oyo State Governor, Shei Makinde, has applauded the peaceful conduct of the exercise and expressed satisfaction at the turnout of delegates 
while calling on all agreed members to return to the main fold to iron out their differences. I congratulate the executives that we have just elected today. It is historical. This is the first time that we're coming for an elective congress and the situation is carnival-like. They should watch out. PDP will unite Nigeria. PDP belongs to all of us. They must come back and get integrated into the fold. Elsewhere in the Oyo State capital, Ibadan, another group of PDP members also held a congress electing Mr. Michael Okunade as their chairman. Earlier, hoodlums reportedly attacked the venue, but that did not stop the process from taking place. Congress was very, very peaceful. Only we got to know from some people outside, from the security agents, there are some hoodlums who are planning to disturb this Congress. But good enough, the Congress is ongoing. We are not, don't believe somebody can disturb us. And we believe we are going to get to the end of the matter. Actually, we have not seen anything bad in the consolation because we disagree to agree, we agree to disagree, which is normal. You understand? We don't mind. If that will be the uh, probably will be the resolution of the party, it's welcome. A chief dean of the APC and former publicity secretary of the party in Lagos, Mr. Joe Ibokwe, has been reacting to the attack on his residence in Inewi Anambra State and that of other politicians from that part of the country. In an interview with Channels Television, Mr. Ibokwe attributes the attack to the work of detractors, opposed to his vocal support dialogue and alignment with progressives. He maintained that the election in Anambra State must hold against all odds. He was speaking on the sidelines of the APC Congress in Lagos. We work hard for the elections to hold. The other one is why my house was touched. So I've been an advocate of dialogue. You know, it's not everything that you want to achieve through violence. That's why they attacked my house to gag me. But nobody died. Those material things. I said, if that is the sacrifice I'm going to pay for things to be okay, let it be. When the news of 10 returns, International Monetary Fund projects Nigeria's debt-to-GDP ratio to hit 42% in the next five years. That's on Business News. Join us again. Welcome back. A former governor of Kano State, Rabi Ukwankwanso, is being questioned by a team of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC operatives, at the commission's headquarters in Abuja over allegations of fraud. It was gathered that the chieftain of the People's Democratic Party was invited in connection with the management of pension remittances amounting to the tune of 10 billion naira between 2011 and 2015 during his second term as governor. Some retired employees of the Kano state government were said to have petitioned the anti-graft body over the funds which they claim were mismanaged. Mr. Kwan Kwanzo reportedly failed to honor an earlier invitation by the EFCC in September. It's over two weeks since President Muhammad Buhari assured Nigerians in his Independence Day broadcast that the suspension of the services of microblogging site Twitter will be lifted if certain conditions are met. While Nigerians await the return of Twitter services, small businesses and entrepreneurs are still lamenting the loss of revenue, which according to them has threatened their businesses. In this next report, our technology correspondent Victor Mathias takes a look at the cost of the suspension, government's promise to lift the suspension, and the plight of entrepreneurs. I have directed that the suspension be lifted, but only 
if the conditions are met to allow our citizens continue to use the platform for business and positive engagement. This message by President Muhammad Buhari during his Independence Day speech gave some Nigerians a glimmer of hope that their source of livelihood will soon be restored. But over two weeks after, the situation remains the same. The suspension on Twitter took effect on June the 4th, 2021, and it is estimated that the country has lost almost $800 million, according to the NetBlock's cost of shutdown tool, as SMEs continue to suffer. After the percentage of our clients that come from Twitter, that percentage has really, really reduced because many people just left Twitter and, you know, never came back to Twitter. So we've had to focus only on Instagram what that has meant is that there has been less um, visibility for the business, except on Instagram. If I was making a million before, now I'm probably making 150,000 or 200,000. So for you to know how much we are losing, all thanks to Twitter ban. And a lot of young Nigerians on social media, especially Twitter, um, use Twitter for their services, such as food delivery businesses, like food business, um, logistics services, um, fashion designers and the likes, and then a lot of content creators, digital marketers, um, and publicity, um, public relations people use social media for their businesses and services. And so those are the ones who have been hit the most. The government, however, says for the suspension to be lifted, Twitter has certain conditions that must be met. But how far has the negotiations between the federal government and the tech giant gone? We have not been able to finalize uh, uh, talks, but I just want to assure you that we have made tremendous progress. However, industry sources have it that a major point of disagreement appears to be the IP addresses of users, amongst others. Businesses who had turned to WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook as an alternative as a result of the suspension also faced some downtime when services of Facebook Inc. was shut down worldwide. Though no reason was given for the shutdown, services of Facebook Inc. has since been restored. For over four decades, the United Nations has sustained advocacy on food security, healthy nutrition and a safer environment through the World Food Day, which is annually celebrated in over 150 countries on October the 16th. This year, the focus is appreciating individuals who contribute to creating a sustainable environment for food security. Our next report examines food security in Nigeria as the country joins the rest of the world to mark the day. Nigeria has over 70 million hectares of arable land suitable for crop production that can guarantee food security and generate foreign exchange for the country. However, statistics from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development reveals that only 40% of the country's arable land is cultivated mainly by peasant farmers. Cassava, yam, maize, guinea corn, millet, and recently rice are the major crops produced in Nigeria. Although experts say Nigeria has the potential to produce crops that can feed 600 million people, annual local agricultural produce can barely feed its 200 million population, as the country spends 1.89 trillion naira annually on food importation. At this news conference to mark the 2021 World Food Day in Abuja, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development highlights what needs to be done to harness the country's huge agricultural potentials. The expectations we have in agriculture to take Nigeria to the promised land could only be achieved when our entrepreneurs take deliberate actions to invest in different value chains. The potentials across crops livestock, horticulture, and fisheries subsectors are enormous. According to the federal government, Nigeria is currently Africa's largest producer of rice, cassava, and yam. It is also ranked 14th in the Global Maize Production Index. However, insecurity remains a major challenge for some of these farmers in northern Nigeria. <laughs> I got quite a 
If you go to the farming communities, people live on the street, they live on the road because they can't assess their communities. Even on the road, you saw that I was attacked. So it means they actually have nowhere to stay. They stay in marketplaces where there are military posts. And how can you farm in an IDP camp? Apart from insecurity, some other farmers say they need government support to increase their productivity. If there is help from government, they, they can even uh, share fertilizer to, uh, among uh, the farmers so that uh, it will help us to uh, produce more uh, quantities. <laughs> The outbreak of COVID-19 in Nigeria last year greatly compounded Nigeria's food security problem, which is already threatened by insecurity, including direct attacks on farmers in some parts of the country, challenges that still exist and must be addressed to prevent any looming food crisis. Thousands of participants in various clusters across different countries of the world filed out today for the Arise Walk for Life, a yearly global initiative dedicated to creating healthy awareness globally. The convener, Arise Women, Dr. Shiju Iluyomade, says the platform is to draw more attention to physical health, especially as countries continue to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's event, themed I Choose Life, precedes the Arise Women Conference, which is scheduled to hold on the 30th of this month. Walking for a good cause may be fun for the participants in the Arise Walk for Life. But first, they begin with some workout sessions, spiced up with dance routines, to prepare for the long walk ahead. Participants in this cluster including the wife of the Ogun State Governor, Bamidili Abiodun, are excited to go the distance for a cause they care about. In this case, to create awareness for regular physical exercise and healthier life choices. The truth of the matter is that it is the desire of God that we are in good health. And this body, we don't have any other body. And that's why you have to take care of that body. We actually can call it resource control. It's a risk, the body is a resource, and then we can target resource control because you have to control your appetite, control your weight, control your sugar intake, and then hydrate the body. It's just really amazing, you know what I mean, right? All the, all the, the energy, the energy level is like through the roof. So just walking in there, singing all the songs, the dancing, and seeing people really genuinely happily motivated to be a part of a movement that is not about uh, anything else but awakening the human spirit, awakening the love for life and love for God is just amazing. The convener, Arise Women Nigeria, Dr. Shiju Iluyomade, emphasizes the importance of healthy living through regular exercise and a right diet. I choose life means that you're able to make decisions which pertain to your life, to decent living, to be able to choose good health and longevity. Because if you continue to walk and you build up even your metabolism, you are, it is proven that you will live longer. For every, two, for every one hour you, love, you walk, you live two hours longer. So that's been proven and tested. The gathering now moves to an open space where the fun continues. Arise is a non-governmental organization committed to accelerating nation building through the empowerment of women in the society and improved health care, especially for the vulnerable. Let's find out what's happening in the world of business. Teniola Shobowali has details. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Welcome to Business News. 
The federal government's debt to gross domestic product ratio will rise steadily to 42% by 2026, from 35.7% in 2021, and that's the latest projection by the International Monetary Fund. According to its October 2021 fiscal monitor report, the IMF says the gross debt includes overdrafts from the central bank and liabilities of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. The report mentions that average gross debt for low-income developing countries like Nigeria this year would likely remain stable at almost 50% in 2020, while debt vulnerabilities are expected to be high, with the room for more borrowing getting smaller. Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves has sustained its accretion for the fourth consecutive week as the gross position closed higher by $1.03 billion week on week to $39.42 billion as of October the 13th amid rising oil prices. An increased foreign reserve comes as good news to the economy as it means the central bank has more foreign exchange at its disposal to intervene in the forex market, which is expected to reduce pressure on the country's exchange rate. Meanwhile, analysts expect the external reserves to maintain the uptrend on improved liquidity in the investors and exporters window of the forex market over the medium term continue to rise in crude oil prices, inflows from foreign currency borrowings and IMF SDRs. Meanwhile, let's find out how forex trading activity ended at the FMDQ exchange this week. The total turnover of transactions carried out at the FX spot forwards and futures markets decreased by 57.47% week on week to $1.56 billion as at October the 15th. A breakdown of the activity at the FMDQ exchange shows that the total value of transactions at the FX spot market also increased by 10.60% against the previous week to $748.39 million. Meanwhile, the Naira dropped further by 0.10% to 413 Naira, 37 Cobble against the dollar at the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange window of the Forex market in the comparative week. Let's cross over to the fixed income market and we start with the bond market segment, which was largely quiet on Friday, apart from some interest across selected maturities. The average benchmark yield closed at 8.25%, indicating a week-on-week -week rise by of 1.53%. At the Treasury bills market, it started the week on a quiet note, with minimal volumes traded across board, but maintained a bullish trend trend for a major part of the week. Average benchmark yields there closed at 5.20%. Meanwhile, at the open market operations, its bill was flat. It closed Friday at 6.47% and posted a week-on-week -week drop of 1.30%. For the CBN special bills, its average benchmark yields closed the day at 6.03% and fell by 0.17% week on week. Meanwhile, at the equities market, it closed the week with impressive gains after starting off negative on Monday. Strong bargain for stocks propelled both the all share index into new levels in just four trading sessions this week as they gained 1.39 and 1.54% each. Across the sectors, positive sentiment swept across the five key sectors of listed equities, especially the banking counter, which gained 2.64%, and this is largely credited to investors' interest for the shares of FBN holdings. Volume and value, as well as a number of deals carried out on shares transaction within the week, was highly impressive in contrast to last week, as 2.83 billion equities changed hands for 31.65 billion naira in over 23,355 deals. Champion Breweries led 44 other gainers up by 49.52%. Then Africa is top among 14 losers, while the trio of FBN Holdings, GT Holdings and ETI were the most traded stocks for the week. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Melinda for the rest of the news at 10.
Thanks, Daniela. To some company news now, Budweiser beer brand is set to bring two football legends, at Roberto Carlos and John Terry, to Nigeria. The football icons will be playing in a game of kings, which will be managed by a Nigerian football fan. Speaking on how it will all play out, the marketing director, International Bureau's PLC, Ms. Tululokwe Adedeji, says Botweiser is bringing these players to Nigeria to play with professional football league players in a legendary match here. Naja. Naja. Two of world's great legends of La Liga and the EPL, Roberto Carlos and John Terry. It's John Terry! Yes! You have watched them play on the global scene. Now it's time to see them live playing on the Nigerian soil. Budweiser Lager Beer, the brand with claims to football as a passion point, is bringing these two legends to Nigeria in the Game of Kings, Battle of the Greats. The Game of Kings. So if you've always dreamt of being a manager to the world's best footballers, Budweiser Game of Kings is exactly just for you. Buy a bottle of Budweiser, look out on the crown cock, you'll see a code there, Text at a short code 7827 or go to our website slash game of kings and text your code there. You get a chance of being selected as one of the managers of the two clubs we are creating Smooth FC, King FCs. You get a chance to be their manager and manage these 11 aside teams. Now that's epic. There will be live in-person audition where the final two selection of managers who will coach these teams will emerge. Plus, the best of the MPFL players will be brought forward to play in this game. MPFL technical crew would decide who they feel has the best experience or you know, can, who can manage the team the best. And if like someone like me, who might not want to be able to become a manager, but I'm interested in attending the match, you go through the same process. Drink Budweiser, use the code to go online or use your SMS. And then there's another box where you can click to say, okay, fine, I just want to be invited to watch the match. So for, with that as well, we'll also do a fortnight um, draw whereby we will select lucky people who will be invited to the match. Leveraging on that, on our sponsorship of uh, EPL and La Liga and our other activities around football, we're saying, okay, beyond just having these things where consumers are not in direct touch, with our events, with our activities, why not bring consumers within a space where they experience the brand firsthand, where they are the ones calling the shots on the brand. So this uh, gave birth to Budweiser Game of Kings. Imagine getting the spotlight and bragging rights, teaching instructions to world-class players of repute, or being privileged to be on the stands, have dinner with the stars. Budweiser says any of these will happen in a matter of weeks if you stick to your beer of champions. For more sports stories, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo has received the Queen's baton for the 2022 Commonwealth Games to be held in Birmingham. Vice President Oshimbajo, along with the Minister for Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari, welcomed the baton, which is similar to the Olympic torch at the State House in Abuja. Well, Nigeria becomes the third nation to receive the Queen's baton, which will later continue its tour to 15 other African countries before proceeding to Asia. Well, River State Governor Yesam Wike is in Madrid, Spain for the ratification of the Protocol Framework Cooperation Agreement with Real Madrid Foundation. The cooperation agreement forms the basis of the establishment and running of the Real Madrid Football Academy in Port Harcourt, River State, which was commissioned in March 2021. The Academy in Port Harcourt is an initiative of Governor Yesam Wike aimed at nurturing young football talents to maximize their sports and potential while they also go to school. The academy, which admits children from ages 9 to 12, has screened and admitted its pioneer students who are set to commence their sporting and academic development. And to the English Premier League, where Roberto Firmino scored a hat-trick as Liverpool hammered Watford 5-0 in a one-sided game at Vicarage Road. Wolverhampton Wanderers came from two goals down to beat Aston Villa 3-2 at Villa Park, while Leicester City pulled off a big upset defeat in Manchester United 4-2 at the King Power Stadium. Elsewhere, defending champions Manchester City defeated Burnley 2-0, courtesy of goals from Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne. Norwich and Brighton settled for a goalless draw 
while Southampton beat Leeds United 1-0 in a keenly contested game, which was played at the St. Mary's Stadium with Amanda Broa getting on the score sheet. In the last game of the day, Ben Chilwell scored in the 45th minute as Chelsea held on to beat nearly promoted Brentford 1-0 at Brentford Community Stadium. And that's sports news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Kairo Okikiolo. The news at 10 continues with Melinda. Hey, thanks, Kayode. Hundreds of protesters in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum, have called for the fall of the government that is supposed to lead the country to its first elections after 30 years of dictatorship. Protesters accuse the transitional government of failing to get the country out of political and economic turmoil. Military and civilian groups have been sharing power in the East African country since the toppling of the long-standing president of Omar al-Bashir. Detectives are continuing to question a 25-year-old British man who was detained at the scene of Friday's fatal stabbing of Member of Parliament Sir David Amos. Officers spent the day searching two addresses in London, but they are not seeking anyone else. Police are treating the attack as a terrorist incident which may be linked to Islamic extremism. Home Secretary Petri Patel says security measures are in place to protect MPs in the country following this incident. Russia has recorded a thousand COVID-related deaths in a single day, and that's the first time since the pandemic began. The figure has been rising all week, with the Kremlin blaming the Russian people for not taking up vaccination. Only about a third of the population have had the jab amid widespread distrust of the vaccines. Russia's figure of 222,000 COVID deaths is the highest in Europe, with another 33,000 infections reported over the past 24 hours. The government has avoided bringing in strict restrictions because it says it needs to keep the economy running. Officials have instead focused on urging people to get vaccinated. And the main news again. The tempo of political activities today rose a notch higher ahead of the 2023 general elections as the main political parties choose their executives at the state level. APC leaders applauded the conduct of the Congresses, although in some states, parallel Congresses were held by factions of the party in Ogun, Oshu and some others. Also today, the PDP moved to strengthen its structures in seven states as it held fresh congresses. As former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says, he was hopeful of a transparent process at the party's convention at the end of this month. That's the news at 10 tonight. I'm Melinda Kilami. On behalf of the team, good night.